welcome back to Conscious Truth. Now, I would like to talk a bit about Einstein's relativity theory, um, in particular the idea that time dilates when you travel fast. Um, this is most commonly shown in a thought experiment like this one where you can see this man is standing in a spaceship and the light is bounced off of a mirror on the ceiling and back down again and he measures this speed of light to be C about 300,000 um, kilometers per second yet someone who's observing this person from uh, motionless from where they are they will see the light will apparently seem to travel in in this sort of diagonal motion because the, uh, this, sorry, this spaceship is moving very fast half the speed of light so from where they are the light seems to move in this long angular direction and it seems to travel a much further distance and, uh, so as it explains here it says the spaceship is traveling at constant speed of half the speed of light according to Einstein this makes no difference to you you can't even tell you're moving however if someone else was looking at you the person at the bottom they would see your beam of light travel upward along a diagonal path strike the mirror and back down in other words you see different paths for the light and more importantly those paths aren't even the same length this means that the time the beam the time the beam takes to go from the laser to the mirror or to the detector must be different for you and for the person on the spaceship so you see this travel a further distance which means it must take a longer time as well because the speed of light is apparently always the same for every observer so what this means is that you see the light take you know just whatever it is let's say it's two seconds but they seem they only for them it only seems to take one second so therefore their one second has lasted the same amount of time as your two seconds their one second has stretched or slowed down dilated so this seems to make sense when you when you see it like this and funnily enough I, I when I was googling this earlier to try and find this picture nearly every single website every single picture you find of this uh, thought experiment it's always like this it's always with the mirror on the ceiling and the de detector on the floor here's another one again another website where they said the same thing the mirrors on the ceiling the laser emitter is on the floor and here they show the same thing the diagonal motion but when I th I mean I, 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 this isn't a new thing I, I've worked this out years ago I just thought I'd make a video about it now but this is obviously not the case when the light is moving forwards and backwards as I will explain in a moment but I'd like to point out something else about this which is obviously ridiculous is that obviously if this spaceship was moving this way and, and, and you're talking about the light moving how is the light going to move in this diagonal direction? it's not is it? If this is a laser, lasers travel in straight lines right? so the laser's just going to go up and the spaceship's going to move and it's going to miss the mirror apparently according to this model why would the laser move in this diagonal direction? Someone, I'm sure someone very brainy out there will, will come up with some kind of bizarre explanation of how this experiment could actually work. But as far as I can see, this would never. This is just an. It's an illogical thought experiment that doesn't work. But you see it in all these textbooks, all these physics websites. They put this there as if this somehow makes sense. It doesn't make sense. If the if the laser truly you know if if the spaceship if this mirror is moving from here to here and this laser is moving in a straight line it would miss the mirror so this just doesn't make sense that wouldn't that wouldn't work he'd have to actually angle the laser 
to fire it at this angle, obviously, which he hasn't done. He's just fired it straight up and down. So this scenario would never happen. Either there's something very wrong with this theory, or this, or there's something. Um, well, there, there is something very wrong with this theory. I mean, that's the whole point of this video. This wouldn't happen. So, you know, the, I, I don't know if I'll, I'll explain later on more about why I think what I think is really going on. I'll explain at the end what I think is really going on. But anyway, for now, so now we'll go back to the. So I made my own diagram here. So C, speed of light, it's about 300,000 kilometers per second. So I've got the space shuttle here with uh, Cody, or whatever she's called, Katie. I call her Katie Toothpaste Bones Coleman because she did an experiment supposedly to test how her bones were affected by space travel. And meanwhile, she swallowed fluoridated toothpaste the whole time. Obviously, would have completely ruined the results of the experiment. I'm not sure if she got fired after that or what, but anyway. So, Katie Toothpaste Bones Coleman is here in her spaceship. Um, she's got this. This is her laser beam emitter, laser emitter, and this is the, her detector. So, she fires the laser in the direction of travel. She's traveling at about a third of the speed of light in the shuttle. So she's traveling about 100,000 kilometers per second in this direction. So she fires the laser beam here. Obviously, by the time she gets to here, this laser beam is going to have to have traveled more than 300 meters. So yeah, I forgot to mention that. Her, her um, little experiment is 300 meters long. So I worked out here that Normally, if she was at rest, or apparently even if she was moving, she would measure the speed of light to be the speed of light. So she would see her laser travel 300 meters in one microsecond. Um, but obviously, if she's this is the spaceship is moving, the detector is moving away from the laser emitter at at a hundred thousand kilometers per second, then it's not going to hit the sensor after um, one microsecond. It's going to take longer because the sensor has moved away from the light beam. So, and I worked out here that the shuttle would move a hundred meters in one microsecond. So, Albert here on the rest he looks up and he sees um, KD toothpaste um, and he sees the light travel 400 meters so because the speed of light is always supposed to be measured the same he must measure the, the time taken to be more than what KD toothpaste bones sees so Albert on the ground sees the light moving at the same speed, but it's traveling further. So the time it takes must be longer. Albert measures the time taken to be 1.3 microseconds. But Katie only measures it to be one microsecond. Therefore, Albert says that Katie's time has dilated or stretched or slowed down compared to him. OK. So this is the, the same experiment as I just described, which you see in all the textbooks, but just the only difference here is that the light is traveling in this direction. But it's the same idea. Her time must have slowed down because he measures this to take a longer time. And a longer distance. So even though that sounds like total nonsense anyway, let's just assume it's true. And now what's going to happen when we send the laser beam in the other direction? Okay, so now 
KD is sending the laser back this way, but the shuttle is moving in the opposite direction. So the detector is going to, well, the light, the detector is going to fly forwards and the light is going to hit the detector much quicker. So how do how does this I mean how how is this possible? So this time Albert now sees the light only traveling 200 meters because it, it, this this detector has moved forward so this distance becomes shorter. So he the light would only travel 200 meters and the, the shuttle because the shuttle has moved 100 meters in the 1 microsecond so the light will hit the sensor before KD has got to the end of her little racetrack here. So if we imagine that she's moving along a racetrack, which is exactly 100 meters, she's moving from here to here, and because this takes one microsecond for her to move from here to here, and on board her spaceship it takes one microsecond for this light to get from here to here, so therefore when she gets to the end of this racetrack, she, she sees the light hit the hit the end there. But from where I'm standing, I see the light hit the sensor before she gets to the end of this racetrack. So this just seems illogical and impossible anyway. Um, just, just the fact that, you know, she's, we're, we're both in space, right? <laughs> I mean, imagine there's lines drawn through the space that she's moving through. It, it, the light is gonna you know it's going to hit the sensor before she gets to the end of the track so it, it just doesn't make sense anyway so I've written here um so the shuttles moved 100 meters but uh, the light will hit the sensor before she's got to the end of this track so Albert sees the light hit the sensor after only 0 0.666 microseconds yet in Katie's toothpaste world she still measures the time taken to be one microsecond. How can this be? Imagine she's on a 100 meter racetrack. How can I see the light hit the sensor before she reaches the end? But she only sees it hit the sensor when she gets to the end. Clearly this is impossible. And also, if like Albert says, I always measure the speed of light to be the same, then if I see this, the light travel a shorter distance, then Katie's time must have speeded up. So, do you believe that time slows or speeds up depending on which direction you shoot a laser? That's obviously nonsense. So because, you know, because I've measured the time, you see, I've measured the, the, the speed of light has traveled 200 meters in, in 0 0.6 microseconds, but she's measured it to take one second. So now her one second is equal to my 0 0.6 seconds, so her time has speeded up, whereas before it slowed down. So what the hell is going on? How, 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 I mean, is it, is it deliberate that they always do this experiment like this, with the, the light going up and down in, in a vertical way? I've only got two examples here, but there was lots. If you just Google, like, uh, you know, relativity, uh, light, uh, time dilation, spaceship. You'll see loads of pictures like this. And they're always like this. And what reminded me to make this video was because I was uh, saw a video where they said that there was an experiment where they, they uh, were trying to detect the motion of the Earth. And they found that the laser... They basically did this, exactly what I've drawn here. And they tried to see if there was a difference in the in the direction of the Earth spinning. Uh, if they fired it one way or if they fired it with the, the spinning or against the spinning. And they found no difference. And they explained that by saying that there was no ether. Michelson-Morley experiment. Um... But really what that shows is that the Earth wasn't actually spinning. Or, 
the other option, you see they contradict themselves with these ideas as well, which is quite strange because Einstein and basically all scientists today say there's no ether. And they say that that experiment proves that there's no ether. But if, um, if the world was spinning and the light took the same time to travel in each direction, then that would mean there must be an ether because but the way I see it, whether I go on to my explanation of what I think is really going on here, there is an ether, but the ether moves because the ether is actually space. And space and ether are kind of the same thing. And they are actually a property of matter. So um, all matter has a kind of field of ether around it, uh, a sort of space field. And so, as the Earth is moving, the ether is moving with it, so it travels the same speed in each direction. Or there's no ether and the Earth isn't moving. I can't really see how they can say that the Earth is moving and there's no ether, because if it was moving and there was no ether, then you would measure a difference in time. Um, pause that for a second. <laughs> Morley experiment. It says um, that. Uh, oh God, where has it gone? Um, uh, yeah, he expected that the Earth's motion would produce. Uh, this shift um, he did not observe the shift his conclusion was that if this stationary ether uh, was rejected and thus confirmed the hypothesis of ether dragging oh Stokes up a... yeah well that's what I just said ether dragging exactly but then they still say that there is no ether so they have to sort of make their mind up with that because they can't not be an ether and then Michael's and Moore experiment uh, didn't. If there was no ether then they would, then they would have just detected a uh, speed of light changing. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, I'd like to know uh, some kind of explanation for why how time can supposedly sh go faster or slower depending on which direction you fire a laser beam I mean that just doesn't make any sense at all and pretty much proves that Einstein's relativity theory is nonsense um, I mean the way I see it the speed of light if you fire if you're firing the speed of light if you're firing the laser beam on the on a spaceship going very fast it's traveling through space with the space is moving inside the spaceship so that's why you experience the speed of light to be the same um, an interesting experiment would be to put a laser on the outside of a spaceship and put one on the inside of a spaceship but even then you you might not get the same because the space uh, the space or the ether dragging effect will probably happen on quite a big area outside the spaceship as well so you'd have to hmm. if it's attached to the moving object then there's going to be ether dragged space ether drag is going to happen wherever you are however far the laser is from the spaceship it's still going to get dragged along so you wouldn't notice the effect yeah anyway so that's something to think about and um, I'd like to hear all the comments of people saying that I've, uh, I'm crazy. Okay, goodbye.